Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, horror film called Tale of Tales. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the kingdom of Long Trellis, the townspeople are preparing to entertain the king and queen. The king and the rest of the court are visibly happy with the performances, but the queen doesn't share everyone's uplifted mood. When one performance ends with a jester spilling a bucket of water on a pregnant woman, the queen hastily leaves the room. With tears at the corner of her eyes, she marches away from the crowd with the king and his servants following her. The queen reaches their chambers and starts breaking items out of anger. When the king finally reaches her, he comforts her as she weeps. That evening, a necromancer visits the royal couple, offering them a way to finally conceive a child. He explains that the birth of life must cost a death to maintain the balance of the world. The queen is prepared to sacrifice her life to give birth, eager to hear the man's solution. The necromancer promises that the queen will be instantly pregnant if she eats a sea monster's heart, which must be prepared alone by a maiden. To carry out the instructions, the king sets out into the river into the sea, wearing armor that allows him to breathe underwater. At the bottom of the sea he finds a pale reptilian creature sleeping. Slowly, he approaches the beast and stabs it with his spear. The creature wakes up, angered by the pain, and throws the king off. The king gets up, unable to see amidst the blood mixed in the water. Finally, he sees the creature just before it swings its scale tail at him before perishing from the wound. With the creature dead, the king's men cut out its heart and lay it before the king, who bears a gash across his stomach. The king laughs, knowing that he succeeded, before succumbing to his wounds. The queen approaches him and takes the creature's heart in her arms, barely looking at her fallen husband. As the queen instructed, a maiden prepares the monster's heart, which still beats even after being cut out. As soon as the maiden puts the heart into a pot of boiling water, she begins to feel strange, clutching at her belly in pain. Determined to carry a child, the queen devours the heart, her hands and face covered in its blood. On the next day, both the queen and the maiden give birth. Holding her son, the queen is delighted, finally having her wish come true. The king of High Hills and the king of Strongcliff attend the funeral for the king of Long Trellis. During his wake, the queen of Long Trellis fawns over her son while the maiden carries her own. Sixteen years later, the queen of Long Trellis plays with her son, Elias, in the garden maze. She struggles to keep up with him, allowing him to hide along with his friend, Jonah, who looks exactly like him. Elias and Jonah climb over the maze, leaving the queen wondering where her son has gone to. She heads back to the castle and spots Elias riding a horse with Jonah. Elias and Jonah hide from the knights who are looking for the prince. Being able to breathe underwater, the two boys evade the knights easily. The queen calls in the maiden, who is Jonah's mother. The queen threatens to banish both Jonah and his mother if Jonah continues to see Elias. Elias finds Jonah's mother in tears as she walks out of the courtroom, leading him to question the queen's insistence on separating him from Jonah. But the queen reminds him that she is both his mother and his queen, thus, he should obey her. The queen warns Elias that if she sees him with Jonah again, they will both regret it. Meanwhile, the king of Strongcliff wakes up after a night of drinking and pleasure. He stumbles inside his castle, intrigued by a woman singing. He looks out the window and spots a woman in town who hides from him when he makes suggestive remarks at her. Determined to get her attention, the king sends the woman an expensive necklace, unaware that the woman is old. The woman, Dora, and her sister, Ima, fawns over the necklace. That evening, the elderly sisters prepare for bed when the king of Strongcliff knocks on their door. He expresses his desire for Dora, whom he has fallen for after he heard her sing. Knowing that he won't be happy to see Dora's appearance, Ima is about to confess when Dora stops her. Dora teases the king, wanting to take advantage of the opportunity. She promises that she will offer him a piece of her if he returns in a week. Confused yet overcome with desire, the king agrees. In the kingdom of High Hills, the princess, Violet, plays a song that she composed for her father. The king of High Hills becomes distracted when a flea continues to appear despite him swatting it away. Violet sees her father's distraction, concerned yet continues to sing. After the song is over, the king heads to his room and tends to the flea. He places it in an ornate box, fascinated by the tiny insect. As days go by, the king of High Hills is more focused on caring for the flea than on his kingdom. Meanwhile, Violet's tutor reads a romantic novel to her, which grows her interest. One afternoon, Violet insists on getting married, but she gets discouraged when the king doesn't share her eagerness. After Violet complains about her supper, the king takes her leftovers to the flea, which has grown gigantic. The flea, hidden in his chambers, enjoys the meal while the king is pleased as if caring for a child. Back in the kingdom of Long Trellis, the queen and Prince Elias watch a bear perform circus acts. Seeing her son laugh, the queen is glad, thinking that he's distracted enough not to disobey her further. That evening, the queen prepares for an event and asks Elias for help. While he helps her put on a pair of earrings, the queen catches a whiff of his scent, baffled at what she smells. When he leaves, the Elias that helped her was apparently Jonah, who meets with Elias in his room. The real Elias is ecstatic with the news, thinking that they can both pretend to be king once Elias ascends the throne. Unbeknownst to them, the queen listens to their conversation through the window. Having heard enough, she knocks on his door, causing the two boys to switch clothes hurriedly. 
The queen enters to remind Elias that she has sacrificed a lot to give him life despite having only carried him in her womb for a night. When her words don't sway Elias, she tells him that no one would love him as much as she does before leaving. With the queen gone, Elias and Jonah share confused looks before Jonah heads out to return home. Jonah climbs down the stairs and into the butchery. There, the queen ambushes Jonah, hunting him down with a fire poker. Jonah evades and hides behind the hanging meats as the queen continues to search for him. Jonah crawls away from the scene, avoiding the wrathful queen. On the next day, the queen and Elias pose for a royal painting, but the prince is distracted, seeing Jonah bid his mother goodbye outside. Unable to ignore this, Elias follows Jonah and asks why he's leaving. Jonah dodges his question, but plunges a knife into a tree root where water spouts out. He promises Elias that as long as the water is clear, he is well. With that, Jonah leaves his friend, with the queen watching from a distance. Days later, a few kids play with ducks on the tree where the water spouts. Elias shoes them away and checks on the water, glad that it's still clear. Back in Strongcliff, Dora and Ima attempt to make her finger look younger to deceive the king, but when Dora fails, she weeps. The king of Strongcliff arrives, waiting at her door. Out of options, Dora uses Ima's younger-looking finger to deceive the king, which he lustfully fawns over. The king demands her to show more, driving Dora to a corner. Pretending to be a shy maiden, Dora tells him that she will spend the night with the king only if he meets her in total darkness. The king eagerly agrees. That evening, Ima helps Dora prepare before joining the king in his bed. Ima prays for Dora to be safe despite fooling the king, then goes to bed, feeling alone for the first time without her sister. That morning, the king wakes up and sees Dora clearer. When he sees her disfigured and aged appearance, he demands the guards throw her out, accusing her of being a witch. As the king commands, the knights throw her out of the window, saved only by her blanket that gets caught on the tree branches. A passing witch laughs at Dora's condition before rescuing her. Once Dora is on the ground, she weeps in both pain and heartbreak. The witch carries her to her chest and nurses her like a mother. When the witch leaves, Dora is fast asleep, turning into a beautiful young woman. Later that day, the king of Strongcliff hunts in the woods when he finds the younger Dora. Immediately, he falls in love with the enchanting woman. At the kingdom of High Hills, the king calls his doctor to heal the gigantic flea. The doctor is confused, having never seen a creature like it before. But it's too late, the giant flea dies, leaving the king mourning. He tells the doctor to keep the creature's existence a secret before he goes. In the morning, Violet picks out a dress that her father sent. The king of High Hills finally agrees to let her marry, but her husband will be chosen by a tournament, though he is sure that the game he chose will be difficult to win. Violet worries that she will not love the man who wins or that she'll be stuck with her father if no one wins. The king has the gigantic flea skinned and uses its hide for the tournament, promising that whoever guesses which animal the hide was taken from will marry his daughter. Violet watches mournfully as men she doesn't like walk up to the hide and take their guess. When she spots a nobleman that she likes, Violet asks her father the correct answer, promising that she won't tell anyone. The king finally relents, telling her that the hide came from a flea, but Violet is underwhelmed, thinking that he is lying. The crowd gasps when an ogre, steps up to guess. Believing that no one would be able to know the correct answer, the king allows the ogre to take part in the contest, much to Violet's dismay. The ogre sniffs the hide carefully, then answers that it's from a flea. The king's smile dissolves, now bound to let an ogre marry his daughter. Violet rushes away, climbing over the castle walls. The king finds her standing on the edge, ready to take her own life. He pleads for her to stop, claiming that he didn't expect anyone to guess. Hoping to save his daughter, the king apologizes and tells her that it's perhaps God's will for her to marry the ogre, that it'd bring her happiness. Violet accuses him of being less of a beast, given that he doesn't care for his child. This angers the king, asserting his authority on her. With her voice breaking, Violet accepts the marriage and leaves. Marching out of the castle, Violet cries and meets her new husband. The ogre drags her out to the woods and carries her to the mountain. They arrive at his cave, but Violet hesitates, frightened by the sight of numerous animal bones. Later that day, Violet remains in her corner, mournful of the life she's pushed into. The ogre pulls her back into the cave and forces himself on her. In the kingdom of Long Trellis, the tree sprouts blood, alerting Elias that something happened to Jonah. He rides alone into the woods, leaving his mother and her subjects to look for him. Elias arrives in a town and is mistaken to be Jonah. Jonah's mother and her friends are glad to see him safe, telling him that he'd been gone for five days. Back in the kingdom, the necromancer tells the queen that Elias and Jonah are inseparable. He warns that her violent desires will require violence, which the queen is willing to pay. In the woods, Elias continues to search for Jonah. Hearing him, Jonah calls out from a cave but cannot move due to his injury. Instead of Elias, a strange creature finds Jonah, cornering him into a hole. Elias sees Jonah and carries him away from the beast. The monster stops when Elias uses his body to shield Jonah, allowing the prince to stab the creature. It instantly dies, letting the two leave and reach the town. Elias goes, knowing that his friend is safe. Back in the cave, the monster slowly disintegrates, leaving the queen of Long Trellis' body behind. In Strongcliff, a servant brings Ima a dazzling dress, giving her an invitation to the royal wedding sent by the future queen. Thinking that Dora succeeded in seducing the king, Ima happily accepts. 
Ima attends the wedding that evening, nervous about being around noblemen and ladies. When the king and his new queen arrive, Ima is confused, seeing the tall young woman in the king's arms. Later, the queen takes Ima out of the court, revealing herself as Dora. Ima is frightened, confused at what happened. Dora explains that she woke up and sees that she's changed her skin. Ima lovingly touches her sister's youthful look as Dora promises that she will take care of her sister. Dora has Ima promise that they will keep it a secret before leaving. As the king and queen begin the feast, Ima tries to keep up but becomes distracted by circus performers. She tastes the food and becomes obsessed, having never tried such delicacy before. When the celebration is over, Ima is drunk and refuses to leave the castle. Dora takes her away and urges her to leave. Ima insists on wanting to stay by her side, but Dora refuses, knowing that it may jeopardize her schemes. Afterward, Dora prepares for bed, but Ima sneaks into her room, begging to stay. Angered, Dora shuts her down, reminding her of her old appearance and so no one would believe that they are sisters. Ima now decides that she wants to be young too, begging Dora to tell her how she did it. Frustrated, Dora lies that she had herself flayed to change her skin. As Dora is pulling Ima to leave, the king arrives. Dora hides Ima behind curtains as she spends her honeymoon evening with the king. Ima watches the newly married couple, allowing the king to spot her in the room. He assumes that Ima is the same woman he had thrown over the window, alarming the guards. Dora tries to calm her husband down, hoping that Ima, who she now claims to be a neighbor, won't be harmed. But the king insists, frightened by the woman. Dora allows her sister to get dragged away, not wanting to reveal who she really is. In the morning, Ima approaches a doctor, begging him to flay her to change her skin. The doctor refuses, thinking that she's gone mad. Ima moves on, searching for anyone else who would skin her to turn her young. Ima offers a man all the jewelry that Dora gave her for the wedding ceremony as payment. The payment convinces him. The man takes her to the woods and does the deed. Ima whimpers in pain but holds on, believing that it will turn her young and beautiful. She walks back to town, bloody and weak. In the ogre's cave, Violet desperately tends to her clothes when she hears someone outside. Desperately, she climbs out and finds a woman whom she begs for help. But the woman refuses, scared of the ogre. Violet pleads in tears, making the woman think twice. The woman promises to bring others for help tomorrow, forcing Violet to spend another night with the ogre. The following morning, Violet helps the ogre clean animal skins when she spots a young acrobat who helps her across the cliff. The ogre notices her gone and chases after them. The acrobats cut the rope as soon as Violet is across, causing the ogre to fall off the cliff. Happy to be rescued, Violet rides with the acrobats and celebrates. But the ogre, who survived the fall, reaches their trailer and attacks them. Violet grabs a knife before running with the survivors to escape. Hidden behind a pile of branches, the acrobat shakily drinks some fuel then blows fire onto the ogre's face. The ogre screams in pain but catches the acrobat, choking him until his neck breaks. The woman tries to save him but suffers the same fate. Now alone, Violet runs away from her husband, tired and frantic. She climbs over rocks but finds herself on a dead end. Hearing the ogre's grunt, she crouches down in tears until he sees her. Frightened by his anger and with nowhere else to go, Violet slowly walks back to him. The ogre grabs her and pushes her back. Then, in an attempt to calm him, Violet softly lays her head on his chest. The ogre accepts her embrace and motions for her to climb over his shoulder to take her home. Instead, Violet slits his throat and watches him scramble until he bleeds out. In the castle of High Hills, the king has grown ill but gains his strength back when he hears that Violet has returned. Violet approaches her father, covered in blood while carrying the ogre's head to present to her father. Filled with grief and fear, the king kneels before her and begs for her forgiveness. The rest of the court kneels before their princess, who pities her father but succumbs to tears as well. Days later, Violet is crowned as the Queen of High Hills, finally taking charge of her life. The King of Strongcliff, Dora, and Elias attend her coronation. Above them, an acrobat walks on a tightrope on fire in honor of the family of acrobats who died after rescuing Violet. While everyone's eyes are on the performance, fate plays a cruel trick on Dora as she notices her skin begin to wither and wrinkle. Horrified, she rushes out of the castle, unable to face her husband in her true form. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.